Welcome to the Sports Betting Podcast from pregame.com for Thanksgiving weekend 2009. I'm your host, RJ Bell. I'm joined by Marco D'Angelo, 30 years in the business, Vegas runner, genuine professional better here in Las Vegas. This is segment one of six, big game preview, college football, Auburn and Alabama. All right, as always, Vegas Runner, start off. What's, what has the line done in this game? All right, Alabama opened up as a 12.5-point road favorite with a total of 47. As of today, Bama's down to 10, and the total still stayed at 47. So no money's come in on the total yet, but some money on Auburn. Now, as we talk about each week, we profile the types of line moves and uh, some of them are more likely to be true positions or true steam as you call it in your blog and you actually do this at pregame.com in the yes, blog and one of the main rules is if it's a public team if it's a favorite and it's betting on them it's possible that they're looking at a buyback later if they're betting on the dog or the less marquee team which is usually one and the same it's likely a true position. So Correct. this seems like a true position. Yeah, yeah, going against an Alabama so, squad. So we can say the wise guys like Auburn. Absolutely. Okay, so now you've got your official free pick. Yes, I do. Yes, so I each do. Each week we give one pick that's an official free pick, but then we give leans throughout all of our pot, all of our previews. First up, though, Marco, as a handicapper, what jumped out at you about this game? Well, and this is going to be a good segue for me that uh, guys might want to check out our This Week in Vegas video. We talked about this week, it's rivalry week, and how to handicap these games. Very insightful stuff. And, and you and VR do this every week, and you can get all the videos at pregame.tv. Absolutely. And the thing that jumps out is Auburn's got nothing to lose in this game. They can take chances in this game. You know, fourth and two situations where they can gamble because – their arch rivals, they would love nothing better than to wreck that season for All Alabama. Right, so let me ask you a question. We want to make sure we give VR the time he needs here, but that nothing to lose. I've never really understood that. So in theory, is the the teams that have the least to play for have nothing to lose. In general, is that the teams you want to bat? And if not, what's the distinction? In rivalry week, that is a huge advantage because teams like Alabama – They've got the national championship on the line, undefeated season on the line. They've got the SEC championship game next week. In so many instances, they're going to come into a game and possibly play more not to lose instead of playing to win, which creates situations for a live dog that gambles, which can backfire too. If you take some fourth and two sometimes and you don't but if make it was, them. If it was better to be crazy and wild and not conservative why wouldn't teams do that all the time well it is a reckless approach there's no question but when you're at the end of the season and there's really no ramifications for you making a you know a gutsy stupid call maybe you know all of these calls they're either genius calls or stupid calls depending on the outcome of the but there's play. a general concern in, in vr and, and again we're going to give you all the time sure. you need on this um how do you look? I mean, to me, I look at there's two ways. I, I see Marco's point, which is if a team isn't nervous and hyper conservative, then they play looser. But then along that spectrum of looseness becomes the issue of not caring about the game. Right, right. So is there an optimum middle ground where they care, but they're not tight? Or, and if not, how do you look at this whole kind of nothing to lose? Uh, kind of having a I don't look at it as nothing to lose. I look at it more as the dog, the, well, the back door will always be open because I don't think they're, they're going to stop playing. Uh, regardless of how bad they might be getting dominated, I think you're going to get maximum effort the whole 60 So you're talking minutes. about two different things. You're saying because it is a rivalry game, they're going to try hard even if they're down by 21 with 15 Yeah, you're going to get nonstop motivation. And that's a little bit there. So we got two different angles on this game that you got, not angles, but perspectives. One is Marco thinks Auburn's going to be loose, and he looks at that as an advantage. And you're saying Auburn's going to be motivated because it is a rivalry. So the, 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 as you said, the back door is always it's open. always open. That's not for you, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, closed. <laughs> <laughs> the back door is closed. All right. Now we know. So, <laughs> all right, so give us your pick. All right. I, I really like Auburn in this spot, and I, 
I, you should be able to get plus 10 or better. I don't think it's going to dip below this number. All right, so let me jump in. Hate to do it. You've been doing a line move prediction thread on Thursday. Yep, and i got to tell you, this thing's blowing me away. Is Unless I'm mistaken, it's something like 35 and 5? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so you've is. predicted 40 games over the course of the last three or four weeks. And amongst the games that moved, some didn't move at all. At all so right. we just throw those out. Of the 40 games that moved, you predicted 35 of them Correct. to you, move the right way. Correct. You would have got a better number by reading that blog 35 out of 40 times. And it's free. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, so on this game, what you like Auburn, you're going to tell us why, but what's your line move prediction? I, I think this is going to stay at 10. I think that's where it's going to go from here on. The only way it could go is higher now. Um, I don't see the... the so well, dog players, if if you are at least going to get 10 or maybe more, you wait till game day. Yeah, if you player. disagree with me, bet Bama now. If All you right. agree with me, you could wait till kickoff. You're only going to get a better number. All right. Because there's not a, a profitable middle opportunity here. If they took plus 12 and a half, they're not going to lay in 10. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that they will try to take a position is middling and stuff. And you're saying right. you don't see that to be the case. And when I say they, I mean the wise no, guys. Correct. All right, correct. so give me the fundamental breakdown on why you like Auburn. Uh, bottom line here, I think this line is way off. I went back to see what, coming into the season, we knew Alabama was going to be an excellent team. What number did they put on them games that you could bet until the season kicks off? And they had Alabama as a four-point favorite in this game. Okay, so now they brought them out over a touchdown higher, and the wise guys reprimanded them and let them know that was wrong. I agree with that side. Uh, more importantly, I think there's a lot of extra added motivation the way they got beat up by this team last year. Not only did they lose 36 nothing, but they got totally destroyed. Alabama held the ball for 36 minutes and was just toying with them, taunting them the whole game. So I think Auburn's going to step up here. More importantly, this team at home, has a very strong home field edge. It's not your average three points. This is a team that's six and one at home and one and three on the road. So there's a big difference there on how they play when they're at home. I give extra weight there. When a team's five and one at home, five and one on the road, I don't give that much value for home field. It's okay. not that big of an edge for them, but when they're zero and three on the road and five and zero at home, and it's, it's all huge. about it's all about relative performance. Yeah, is how is what is the power ranking? In fact, a lot of handicappers have a separate power ranking for home and away. They just don't do the same old three. You look at New England, for example. We'll be talking about that Monday night game later. Is they play very well on the road, so it's relative road home for both teams. All right, I got to tell you, I, I tend to, I'm, I think I'm going to, if I can find the 10 and a half, and to me, you know, we know 10 is a key number. you got the, you got a good home team. You know Alabama is a premier, a marquee team, so there's a little premium on them. Exactly. And you also have a situation with a rivalry. You're getting double digits. I, I like Two it. weeks to prepare for Auburn as well. So they've been, they've been looking forward to this now for two weeks. And before we go to Marco real quick, just to clarify, and, and every time you talk about this, you should, because most people aren't Correct. familiar with this, is the, the sports books put out a pre-season line on marquee games you can bet. And then once the season starts, they usually take, take it those down. lines Correct. down. You log those and look at the relative differences between the preseason line and this line. For every game And you have. ask yourself, is has Alabama and Auburn changed that much relative to what they were in the preseason? And you're saying, no, you think it's too much of an adjustment. Yeah, and how could Auburn, Alabama 7-4 and four against the spread. A team that's 11-0 and 0 straight up, that marquee, shouldn't be 7-4 and four against the spread. So I think they're making you pay an extra premium in this spot. Seven, they've won 7 of 11. Yeah, uh, they, that means it's uh, covered too. They're they've they've covered. They've won ATS seven of eleven. Right. All right. So so clearly they're they're, they're better than fifty percent. So I'm not so sure. Whatever premium they've been put put on them, it they've hasn't exceeded. Been enough. They've exceeded. Right. Okay. Right. All right, Unf Marco, you got twenty seconds. <laughs> Give it Quickly, to you made one thing. You said they had two weeks to prepare. They did play last week, but it was against uh, nobody. Chattanooga. Uh, Chattanooga. So we yeah, consider two weeks that to prepare. prepare. All right. All right. <laughs> you might want to consider the over in this game, Alabama. Might go with some vanilla offenses at times, not to tip their hand for next week. All right. Hey, great stuff. Jam-packed. Next up, Florida, Florida State. And that's going to be segment two preview there. Remember, you can get all of our videos at pregame.tv. Or if you want to download and listen, just go to iTunes and search for pregame.com.